Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is March 2nd, and right now we are looking at the visible satellite imagery with the Doppler radars overlaid. You can see we got some precipitation here across Oregon, trying to creep up into Washington here. The bulk of this energy is down into California, but we do have additional systems that will, will be coming across the Pacific Northwest. We'll take a look at those as we go through the video here this morning. And if you want to help support the channel, click on that link down below to save 10% off on this very fun weather station. Now, daylight looks we're at 556 today and tomorrow will be at 557 by the time we get to the fifth we're at six o'clock then the help of daylight savings we're up over 7 p.m i cannot wait for that by the time we get to the end of march 7 38 p.m and if we take a look at april by the time you get to the end of the month of april look at that 8 20 p.m sunset that is going to be glorious i look forward to it and meteorological spring versus astronomical spring you can see the differences here we are into meteorological spring already we this the second day and by march 20th we are into astronomical spring so you see the differences as we go around the year there nice stuff there from the national weather service seattle tacoma you can see there is some beach hazard statements watch out if you're going to the coastline there's that chance for some sneaker wave activity <clears throat> this graphic really kind of shows it quite nicely from portland national weather service and a lot of times you know it's not just some wave that you're just going to see coming a lot of these sneaker waves just come rushing down the beach they move from left to right or right to left depending on which beach you are at so you know it's just kind of a, a sudden surge and what it looks like initially is gentle waves so just kind of watch out for that it sweeps people away and sometimes it costs people their lives and it happens every single year so Spokane National Weather Service also talking about uh, some of the impacts here as we go on and through Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. They just updated this here this morning. You can see when, where, and the impacts coming up. Always nice from Spokane National Weather Service. Travel outlook March 2nd through 5th for the Panhandle into Western Montana. You can see we are gonna have some additional systems as we go on in through the upcoming portion of the week. Check out this wind advisory. It does include Boise and Mountain Home out there as well. I'll show you that in the weather model maps here in a moment. And and you can see gusts potentially to 50 miles per hour with that. And again, 2 p.m. Monday to 8 p.m. on Monday for that wind advisory. So wider view of things here. Japan to the left. There's the Pacific Northwest to the right. Hawaiian Islands bottom center. There's the system spinning some of that light precipitation back up across the region. But then our next storm system, a bit more impactful here for the Pacific Northwest as we roll through mainly on the day Tuesday. This will be with us as we go through Wednesday. Bulk of that energy then drops down into California, kind of a transient ridge here. Gulf of Alaska troughing starts to get going as we go through this upcoming week. That has atmospheric river potential. We're going to be watching that system closely. Really right now has its eyes on western British Columbia. That could be clipping portions of Washington at time. This energy then drops down into California and then the Gulf of Alaska trough that's been continuing to be shown in our extended models continues to show here and now some of the more shorter range models here. And it's a pretty chilly looking system there as we go through the March 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th time frame, and then quickly replaced by another as we go on in towards the mid portion of March. So March coming in like a lion. And if I scroll through here again, you'll kind of see how the ridging out here allows for that trough and that's kind of a signature of La Nina is a semi-permanent ridge of high pressure out here that gets that northwest flow Gulf of Alaska more variable jet stream back down into the Pacific Northwest so yeah we are still in kind of a La Nina pattern the atmosphere is acting like La Nina for the most part and if we take a look at the five day running of 500 millibar heights you'll see this ridge how it's kind of again these are five-day running total series, so you can kind of see how it's out south of the Aleutian Islands, kind of got that La Nina signature to it. Uh, now, taking a look at the artificial intelligence. So this is last night's run, but you see some of that trying to spin up as we go through the day today. It's just light precipitation months for the most part, some higher elevation snowfall. Next system rolls in here. Some breezy conditions for the coastline with that. And better precipitation chances as we go through uh, Tuesday and then on into Wednesday. And some of that energy drops down to California. Then the atmospheric river potential. You see this robust low up towards Haida Gwaii and the Queen Charlotte's moving into western BC. Atmospheric river hanging out and bouncing and around here, potentially including portions of Washington at times. That would bring some heavy rainfall and that could bring some flooding potential to Vancouver Island, Southwest BC as we go through next week. And we're going to have to watch that one closely. Another frontal system then moves through as that atmospheric river kicks through and maybe a windy system there as we go through the following week as we stay active. You see the Gulf of Alaska troughing continuing to bring systems back into the Pacific Northwest as we go through the mid-March period. And we're done with the warm weather or, you know, relatively speaking anyway. And as we go through the next few days, you can see not 
much change in the temperatures here, often on systems rolling through. And then kind of that cool down there as we go through the end of the period is that troughing is going to be setting up somewhere near the Pacific Northwest, it looks like. And this is yesterday afternoon's European model run, 24 hour, two meter temperature change. You probably already feel it out there, but again, by this afternoon, these are the differences in temperature from yesterday afternoon. Some places reaching up over 20 degrees, especially across Oregon. Some of the Cascades of Washington, you'll feel that cool down across some of the eastern Washington, Seattle, Portland, some of the Willamette Valley, and some of the I-5 corridor as well. And if we take a look here at the North American model, this is what <clears throat> we expect for today. And again, we're not you know, not doing too bad here for portions of Oregon, southeast Oregon, and lesser amounts up across Washington. And then we wait for the next system to start rolling in here as we go through the day Tuesday. That could bring some breezy conditions to some of the coastal areas and a little bit better chance of precipitation up across Washington and southwest BC. So taking a look at that wind, I, I, let me point you off to Boise here, which is going to be over here. I'll show you that northwest wind that I mentioned in uh, that uh, uh, wind advisory. And as we go through the day Monday, there it is right there that include Mountain Home and Boise down in Treasure Valley there. Some gusty west winds coming across the Cascades as well. Nothing too crazy. But then the system comes rolling here as we go through Tuesday morning, picks up along the Oregon coast, Washington coast, this little low that could, you know, it's packing a little bit of a punch there. Some gusty winds across the northwest interior as that frontal system approaches. This would be Tuesday afternoon. Now, I wanted to show you guys this really quick. This is going on across the central portion of the USA. Watch the dew point temperature surge up and ahead of this mid-latitude cyclone. It's bringing severe weather out across the plains. You can see that. And then the mid-latitude cyclone swings through and the very dry, cooler air mass behind the cold front rips down across the region all the way out towards the Gulf of Mexico. So I'll play that through again. You can get to see that mid-latitude cyclone clearing things out. Just thought I'd show you that. And heads up, if you have people down across some of Mississippi and Louisiana and Arkansas out there, we have a pretty significant system rolling in here uh, Tuesday. I was thinking about chasing this. It's still a possibility, but probably a pretty low possibility. It's tornado season starting to get ramped up here. But yeah, there is a chance for severe weather. So tell your loved ones or friends and family if you have any down across that region. Now, taking a look at snow depth in inches, you know, over the next few days, the next six days or so, it's not looking too hot. If you just take a look at that number there, it's not increasing. In fact, it is decreasing here over the next few days. Now, we'll be dealing with that atmospheric river as we go through next weekend, which could be bumping up the snow levels there as well. So, not a great pattern for the next week as far as snowfall across the higher terrain. But as we go through later period here in March, we do look to change that up a bit here and we get some cooler weather with the trough that I've been mentioning now for several days. So Seattle Tacoma, I thought I'd show you this. It does show some potential for some lower elevation snowfall, but it is so downright hard to get it down to the lower elevations. <clears throat> you know, the sun starts getting higher up in the sky and the more direct solar radiation makes it very difficult to get that sticking down into lower elevations. But it is possible, and we may be flirting with this, especially across some of the higher terrain there. So we'll continue to watch that. And <clears throat> this goes, <clears throat> excuse me, 46 days out, you can see we've got a lot of precipitation to go here. So a little bit of a false spring there probably gets people's hopes up that, hey, we're turning the corner here to some warmer weather, but not always the case. We're definitely going to be dealing with systems as we go on in through mid-April. And if we take a look at that, there's a system we're dealing with now, and you can see kind of this... Uh, off, off and on pattern there with some of the ridging, some of the troughing moving through. Then the Gulf of Alaska trough gets pretty established here as we go through the 10th, 11th, 12th time frame there. And it kind of hangs out as we go through March as well. So you can kind of see that Gulf of Alaska trough looks like a signal for, uh, you know, a little bit stronger than normal during this time frame as we go all the way in towards early April. Now, 6 to 10 day temperature outlook, you can see some of this mixed bag here across Pacific Northwest, above normal signal for much of the West Coast through March 11th. There's a below normal signal as we get that troughing and some cooler weather here as we go through the mid portion of March, 8 to 14 day as well. So yeah, anyway, I will get this video out. I hope you guys are having a good day. Otherwise, click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.